By now, you've probably heard Kia is making a ute, a pickup truck. It'll be introduced in Australia in 2025 with a possible debut later this year. Whether the unveiling is the production version or just a concept, I can't quite confirm. But I do have lots of juicy details for you today. I can't tell you the source of this information, but I know them well and they work with Kia. I've got the full specifications and the design uh, is at its current stage of development. So every time a vehicle is developed, it goes through a number of processes uh, along the way, and that includes the design. It usually starts with a pretty crazy concept and then it gets watered down, so to speak, uh, to meet certain rules and regulations. So this person has seen the current stage of the design and the current stage of the specifications. Things may change by the time it actually hits the showroom. Let's get stuck into the design. Basically, we sat down with this person I know and a designer, digital designer, uh, Josh Burns. You can check him out on Instagram. Uh, and we've created these renderings based on what he has seen. Think of it as kind of a police identity kit, uh, basically describing what this vehicle looks like. Again, at the current stage of development. I'll just get these renderings up. So if we have a look at these renderings, the front end is obviously very macho, very square and boxy, uh, and, and quite aggressive in the terms of the front grille design. Now we've seen a lot of this with the American pickup trucks, uh, and even the latest Ford Ranger is very square, and it's got those pointed corners. And then in the middle is a, a sort of ute interpretation of Kia's Tiger Nose front grille. So we've got five vertical slats that go down, big gaps between those slats too, uh, but then on the outside, you've got that tiger nose theme. Vertical headlights stacked either side, and then you can obviously see big chunky wheel arch flares sticking out. Now along the top of those wheel arches, my source has told me that there will be some kind of trimming. Um, we've created here, a, it's kind of like a, a recycled carbon fiber kind of look to it. Whether that makes it to production is yet to be, to be known. Uh, but yeah, at the current stage, there is some kind of trimming along the top of those wheel arches. And then down the sides, we've kind of got curvy doors that bubble out towards the bottom and then a very boxy cabin glasshouse section up the top. Around at the back, again, a very boxy utilitarian style of theme going on with tail lights right at the bottom. We've seen that with, with the Hyundai Santa Fe with the tail light that goes, looks like it's too low, uh, where I think that's what they might do here as well. It, it looks like those tail lights should be higher in my opinion, but whether this makes it to production or whether this represents the production version is you know, yet to be seen. And then the flush Kia badge or the very flat Kia badge in the middle, um, then quite a good departure angle there. You can see just how off-road ready this could be. Now, my sources told me there'll be a few different versions available, including a sort of top tier Rugged X kind of Wildtrak X heavy duty rugged style version, which is what's depicted here uh, with big chunky tires and so on, black trimmings. So we saw at the front there, the, the black front grille and then black wheel arch surrounds, black door handles, black window trimmings, all that kind of thing. That's all very much on trend at the moment, but there will be sort of watered down versions as well with probably without these black skirting trims around the, the wheel arches there and probably without those sort of carbon fiber style pieces along the top of the wheel arches. Taking a look inside, yeah, definitely a very horizontal theme going on with a, a trim piece that runs all the way through. It's kind of like a, uh, he describes it as how the Honda Civic has got that vent that goes all the way across the dash. It's kind of like that, um, but in this drawing anyway, it, it scoops down like a big bucket all the way to the passenger side. Um, and then you've got some controls, uh, physical buttons for the the drive modes and things like that. Most of the controls will be up in the touch screen though. Uh, it's twin 12 inch screens or 12.3 or whatever uh, paired together. We've kind of seen that already with Kia's latest models, including the EV9. That's probably a good one to look at in terms of just the theme and the colors and things that they'll go for here. Down below, you might notice the kind of recycled cork on the center console. My source has told me that that's the current stage, that they're gonna go with something like that. We've already seen something similar with the Mazda MX-30, I think it was. It had a kind of recycled cork uh, padded, padded sort of section on the center console as well. So it's, it's pretty unique, it's pretty cool, I guess. Um, as long as it wears all right, you know, this is gonna be a heavy duty vehicle. You don't want something that's gonna be a bit fragile or brittle. 
And then, yeah, conventional steering wheel with all the, all the key controls, you know, your volume and everything on one side and the cruise control and everything on the other side. That's all typical and conventional Kia. Now, in terms of these specifications, as far as I know, there will be three powertrain options. Uh, whether they all make it to Australia is yet to be confirmed as well, but at this stage of the development of the vehicle, there'll be an, the, the R-Series 2.2 turbo diesel. It's getting a bit, bit old now, so I was kind of skeptical when I heard this source say that, but at the current stage, that's what it's got, 2.2 turbo diesel. It produces around 157 kilowatts and 420 newton meters. That torque figure is pretty low by the, the current standards of the segment. So if you look at the Toyota Hilux, uh, Ford Ranger and all that, 500 newton meters is pretty much the standard for a four cylinder diesel these days. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not sure how they're gonna shape up with just 420 newton meters, but 157 kilowatts or thereabouts, that, that's pretty good. If that's not enough, there'll also be a 2.5 liter TGDI turbocharged petrol four cylinder. We've already seen that in the Sonata N-Line in Australia. Uh, it's gonna produce around 206 kilowatts for the Kia Ute, um, but again, that may change by the time it comes to, comes to market. That'll be an interesting option because there are not many petrol alternatives in this specific class. So the D-Max, the Navara, BT50, Ford Ranger, Toyota Hilux, not many of those are offered with a petrol engine, except for the really base models, except the Volkswagen Amarok in Australia it comes with Ford's 2.3 EcoBoost uh, four-cylinder petrol. So this 2.5 litre will be an interesting option. Uh, might be a bit more refined, I guess, than the diesel. So maybe a bit more of a recreational choice uh, for, for buyers that want a ute just for the sort of leisure side of it rather than working. Um, but if you want absolute power, there's going to be a fully electric model. Now, this source has told me that it'll, it, at its current stage, uh, probably in the top spec model, it'll have a 123 kilowatt hour battery. So that's a huge battery um, with 410 kilowatts or up to 410 kilowatts and 800 newton meters of torque. That'll make it one of the most powerful, one of, one of the most torquey uh, options in this specific class, excluding those big American trucks. Now, interestingly, as far as I'm told, Kia really wants this electric version to be the full deal. It doesn't want it to be some half-baked attempt at a, a proper workhorse. So it'll offer a proper three and a half ton towing capacity or 3.4 tons, just, just about under the, uh, the maximum for this class. It'll also offer a great payload. So I've heard 1.1 ton uh, payload, which is huge even for the diesel models. Whether that makes it to the electric version, I'm a bit skeptical about, but this source has told me that no 1.1 uh, ton payload will be offered with the electric version as well. Other hardware details, we've got uh, an e-locking rear differential. Uh, that's pretty standard for a lot of models at the moment, especially the upper spec models. Uh, also over 5.5 meters long. So this is gonna be a long, long truck, a long pickup truck, a long ute. Uh, most of them are around 5.2, 5.3. Eight millimeter water weighting depth and a uh, underfloor camera, well not underfloor, but a ground camera. So when you're off-roading, you can see the exact terrain that you're placing the vehicle on. We've already seen that with some other rivals and some and Range Rover has obviously uh, debuted something like that a few years ago, uh, but that'll be an interesting option for this class. It'll also be able to accommodate a pallet in the rear tray area, which is pretty good, uh, again, for this class. And then, yeah, there'll be a, an off-road version, as I mentioned, like a Wildtrak X that'll have chunkier tires, chunkier trimmings, tow hooks, exposed tow hooks, black wheels, unique bumper bars, and things like that. There's also going to be ambient lighting for the uh, upper spec models, which is, again, pretty good for this class. You don't normally see ambient lighting in the interior uh, for this segment of vehicle. And there could be a, an optional sunroof as well. Again, not many utes have an optional sunroof. I think the Ford Ranger is offered with a sunroof in some markets overseas, in China, I think it was. Uh, but yeah, this will be a, an option available on a, quite a few variants, I'm told. In terms of the price, I'm told it'll start from around $65,000 for the upper mainstream model, so like an SR5 style of rival, $65,000, and then the top version will cost around 77,000. This has been a long time coming really for, for Kia because the ute segment in Australia, the dual cab four x four ute segment is uh, extremely popular, in not just in Australia, but in Thailand as well. Uh, last year, if we look at VFAX, we had 208,716 sales or new registrations. 
in Australia alone in 2013, uh, 2023, 2013, geez, 10 years late, uh, 2023. So that's a big chunk of the market. The overall sales in Australia were 1.2 million. So 200,000 of those were dual cab 4x4 utes, which is a massive chunk for a single segment. So you can see why Kia would jump onto this. I've heard Hyundai might do a ute version as well, but as we've seen in the past, Kia sometimes launches the models first. So we've already seen that with the EV9. They launch and then Hyundai will do the Ionic 7, I think it's called. Uh, that's its version. Kia had the Stinger and then there was the Genesis GV, uh, G70. At least in Australia, the Stinger was the first to launch. And there's a few other models as well that have launched. The Kia has, Kia has been able to launch the model first and then Hyundai does their bit on it. Hyundai is positioned slightly above Kia uh, and just in terms of the corporate hierarchy, I haven't heard any confirmation about the Hyundai though. This is just from Kia's point of view. This person that I know uh, has worked directly with Kia, so they've seen it. They don't know anything about the Hyundai model. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed the, the renderings. I think there'll be more information revealed from Kia itself later this year, uh, considering, oh, especially if they're going to unveil something later this year. Uh, stay tuned for, for lots of teasers and things. I suspect that that's what the company will do to try and drum up the, uh, the excitement. It will be a very exciting model. Obviously, it's a, it's a very big model for them as well. Let me know what you think of the design in the comments based on our renderings. Uh, and yeah, stay tuned for more details.